Hey guys and welcome today to where we're going to walk through the AS Corpio paper for June 2019 or oh, I think it was actually signed May. So this is the AS paper so if you're looking for A2 I have walked through the Corpio 1 and Corpio 2 papers so be sure to check them out. So this paper was pretty challenging overall um, I'd say there were some definitely some tricky questions in it but the first few questions are quite a nice introduction to the paper so let's take a look at these. So question one is a question regarding matrices. So we've got part A here, where we have to show that the matrix M is non-singular. So part A. So remember, if a matrix is non-singular, what that means is that the determinant, so the determinant of M in this case, is non-zero, so it's not equal to zero. So non-singular. This means the determinant of M, we have to show that it's not equal to zero. Okay. So, it's a 2 by 2 matrix, all we've got to do is calculate the determinant. And for a 2 by 2 matrix, remember, so if your matrix is A, B, C, D, the determinant of this is A, D, so it's A times D, minus B times C, okay, for the determinant. So, if we do that with ours, it's going to be 4 times minus 7, so 4 lots of minus 7, minus... So we've got 2 times minus 5. So if I do minus, I'll do it in a bracket, 2 lots of minus 5. Okay, so doing this now, this is going to be minus 28. This would be minus 2 times minus 5, so that would be minus 10, minus minus 10. That's the same as add 10. So minus 28 plus 10 gives us minus 18. Okay. So, because this now, this is the determinant of m, so det m is equal to minus 18, so therefore m is non singular. Because we've shown that the determinant is not equal to zero. And there we have it, so that's part A. Part B now, so we're told that the transformation t of the plane is represented by the matrix m. Okay, so just the, the matrix that we started with. The triangle R is transformed to the triangle S by the transformation T, and we're given that the area of S is 63 square units. So, we've now got to find the area of R. So, two marks, so we should imagine that there's nothing too crazy with this. We've just got to be aware of the fact of the area scale factor for determinants, okay? So, in this case here now, what this is saying is that the area of S, so the area of S, well, that's going to be equal to the absolute of the determinant of m times the area of r. Okay, so the area of r. Well, the area of s, we know that's 63 square units. We just want the area of r. So, if we rearrange this, we can get the area of r. So, therefore, in this case now, area of r... Well, that'll just simply be the area of S divided by the determinant here, the absolute of the determinant. So, area of S divided by the absolute of the determinant. Like so. Well, the area of S we got given, that's 63 square units, so 63, divided by the absolute of the determinant, so the absolute of minus 18, so now you can divide top and bottom by 9, so that's going to give me 7 over 2 square units. And there we go, so the area of R would be 7 over 2 square units. Okay, so that's part B. And then finally, for part C, we just have to show that the line y equals 2x is invariant under the transformation T. So remember that an invariant line of a transformation, that would be one where every point on the line is mapped to a a point on the line okay on that same line so what we've got here is y equals 2x so part c y equals 2x so we could write this as a matrix this would be normally this would be x y right if we had the form y equals mx plus c but we've got our m our m would be 2 and our c is just going to be 0 so plugging this now in here using this equation, well this is going to be x again, okay, 
because we've got our x here and our y is equal to two lots of x so where the y is that's two lots of x okay and now all we've got to do is multiply this with the matrix m here for the transformation so doing that now what we should get is we should get another invariant point so what that be would be for example um like 3x and 6x okay so that would be 3x that would be 6x for example that might be 2x that would be 4x example uh, you know it should always double the y here so or the y should always be double the x so if we do that now that's going to be 4 minus 5 2 minus 7 okay and then multiply it by this x 2x so doing this now I'm going to get 4 times x, that's 4x, minus 5 times 2x, that's going to be minus 10x. Okay, so multiplying that row here by that column. And then finally, we're going to do this row by this column. So 2 times x, 2x, and then minus 7 times 2x, that'd be minus 14x. Okay, so now let's calculate this. 4x minus 10x, that would be minus 6x, and 2x minus 14x, that'll be minus 12x. Okay, so this is good here. We've shown, um, or we've not shown just yet, we need to mention a little comment, but we've got the idea now that this here, um, or this point here, is two lots of this here. So all I'm going to do now is apply this factor of minus 6. So I'm going to apply that factor of minus 6, and we'll end up with x and 2x. Okay, so minus 6 lots of x and 2x, like so. So therefore, because we've got this x and 2x again, it must be y equals 2x must be invariant y equals 2x is invariant and there we have it so we've shown that the line y equals 2x is invariant under the transformation t